Ladies and gentlemen, we interrupt your regularly scheduled programming to bring you this special bulletin. Over the years, probably the past decade, things like journalistic integrity and honesty and accuracy have fallen by the wayside across the mainstream media in favor of pushing some sort of ideological nonsense, picking a side, running with that side, regardless of what the actual truth is. And unfortunately, gaming journalism is no different than anything else, especially when it comes to bastion of journalistic integrity themselves, Kotaku, in this lovely little article from Bounding Into Comics. All the SBI nonsense just, it's never going to end. And this is another example of lies, misreporting, gaslighting, strawmanning. You call it whatever you want to. Nonstop BS. Kotaku editor Alyssa Mercante lies about Sweet Baby Inc. backlash during CBC radio appearance. Claims Steam curator list was made to, quote, prevent people from buying and playing these games. Now, I have no doubt that there's a level of common sense and intelligence out there for anyone bothering to watch and listen to my videos. Just answer me one question. How on earth is making a list, checking it twice? Anyway, thank you, Cabrutus. You deserve a cape. How can you stop someone from buying and playing a game simply by voicing your opinion? If that's enough to stop you from buying a game without at least going to multiple sources, then honestly, you might be part of the problem. Because the ability to form your own opinion on something is a very important thing to humanity. Instead of walking in lockstep, marching in lockstep because you heard one report on one thing and just, oh, it's got to be true. Go out and form your own opinion. But that being said, a list, a Steam curator list made to prevent people from buying and playing games, gatekeeping someone preventing them from opening their wallet and spending their hard-earned money any way they so choose. That's like my opinion on The Acolyte coming out is going to stop people from watching it. My opinion of Disney Star Wars is going to make someone else dislike Disney Star Wars. No, listen to what I have to say, of course. And if you do that, I do so much appreciate you. Thank you. Uh, but also go find other opinions. Not everyone's going to have the same opinion. Not everyone's going to have the same point of view as well. So look to different people, look to different places, not just a single list. The list is there just to show what games SBI and their employees have been involved with. Information and information is all we want. That and, you know, good writing, good gameplay mechanics and all that other nifty stuff. But anyway, back to the article. Uh, there's an editor's note because he spelled Alyssa Mercanti's name wrong, but oh well, moving on. In yet further proof that the lamestream video game press needs to fudge the details about the current discourse in order to convince the public, that's called gaslighting, of their latest gamers are evil narrative, this boggles my mind. I'm going to, I go off on tangents in case you haven't figured that out, but when something like this, a nice... Well, it's a bit of information in an article, it, it tends to set me off sometimes. This idea, you're talking about a video game website that is supposed to be reviewing games, which apparently <laughs> their parent company is going to be forcing them to review games from now on instead of their auditorial nonsense. You want gamers to come to your website, and yet one article after another, after another, Kotaku, Polygon, Eurogamer, PC Gamer, all of these nonstop insults, istophobe, you're a bigot because you don't like this. You're a that, you're a this. Insulting gamers, the customer, the people that keep your website alive, the people that keep the business alive, the gaming industry alive, and you're going to sit there and insult them. Disney's doing the same thing with Star Wars and Indiana Jones and Marvel by insulting the fan base for any sort of criticism. Look how well those movies are doing. Do you want the video game industry to follow the same suit? Be my guest. There is a laundry list of older games, fantastic games, and indie games out there that we'll go find, we'll go play. I'll keep playing Cyberpunk for another thousand hours again. I have no problem with that. 
Take all your new nonsensical, ideologically driven games with piss poor stories and boring characters. See who that sells to. Gamers are evil narrative. Oh, creating the boogeyman because you need one to exist to justify your feeble existence. A recent appearance on Canadian Public Radio saw Kotaku editor Alyssa Mercante claim that the purpose of Sweet Baby Inc. detected, because she knows, even though the guy that made it is one single Brazilian who was upset about the state of the gaming industry, much like all of us are. And he decided to make a list and check it was going to find out who's not. Anyway, uh, was not to simply help inform players of the consultation company's involvement, even though that's actually all it does, but rather outright prevent people from buying and playing them. Again, help me out. I should just start saying help me out, chat, because I did it with two videos. Why not make it a third one? Help me out. Put in the comments. How? is a list of games that your consulting company is part of. I got your greedy, grubby little ideological fingers in. How is that list going to stop people from playing those games? Magante offered up this piece of journalistic dishonesty. <gasps> no, journalistic dishonesty? Spencer, how could you speak the truth like that? During a guest appearance on the March, 5th, March 19th episode, because I can't read, of the Canadian Broadcast Corporation's The Current with Matt Galloway podcast, amidst a larger conversation in which she provided her read of the ongoing backlash against Sweet Baby Inc., a full transcript of which has thankfully been provided by the CBC themselves, Mercanti was asked by the show's eponymous host if she could explain just why the company's critics took issue with their operations. Oh my goodness, I'm going to hide that quote. I don't want to read it yet. Um, let's take bets. Because they're cis, white, hetero man babies who don't like women in control of games and in their games and this and that. They're afraid of women. They're what other different kind of words can we say? Um, it's a harassment campaign, even though it was actually a Sweet Baby Inc. employee who found out about the curator page and went on a rampage harassing and wanted to false flag Cabruto's Steam account to get it destroyed, which was part of this massive amount of backlash. I believe Cabrutus, I believe the uh, Sweet Baby Inc. curator page is well over 300,000 now. Go gamers. Keep up the fight. Anyway, let's see what she has to say. Quote, they believe they have... So <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. That was... <laughs> I did, that was okay. They believe they have some sort of leverage, leverage against all these major gaming companies and that they kind of come in and demand that characters be race swapped and gender swapped or women characters. Oh, okay. She's talking about Sweet Baby Inc. Okay. So gamers believe. Oh, God. This. In, okay. If you're going to use pronouns when you're talking, you need context. You need the name in the sentence before. Um, under, get the get your listeners, your reader, or whatever your viewer to understand what these pronouns, who these pronouns are referring to, instead of make, getting them to figure it out. So let's explain her lovely they they pronouns. I'm not talking about her pronouns. I'm talking about the actual legitimate use of pronouns. Uh, they, as in gamers, believe they, as in Sweet Baby Inc., have some sort of leverage against all these major gaming companies, and that they kind of come in and demand that characters be race swapped, because they do, or gender swapped, because they do, or women characters are made more masculine, or masculine characters are made weaker. But in reality... Hmm, reality. I don't think you know what reality is. Sweet Baby Inc. is a development company that's a contractor, so they don't really have any leverage against any large video game companies. <clears throat> you want to go back to the numerous videos, one of which I did. There are plenty of videos out there. Um, Sweet Baby Inc. co-founder, I don't care about her name anymore, said, if the developer is not interested in your, your ideas and doing what you, tell, what you want them to do, go to the marketing department and terrify them at the idea of what might happen if they do not agree to do what you want them to do. Now, I'm not one to take things out of context, but you go ahead and make your own decision on what that sounds like to you. In reality, they're a development company that, yes, 
She is correct. They get invited in, much like Anita Sarkeesian invited herself in with mafia-style tactics with CD Projekt Red in 2019. It would be a shame if something happened to your game based on all the atmosphere and the look. Oh my goodness. Using mafia-style tactics to insert yourself into the company. Yeah, I believe that would happen. Are they doing it? I don't know. Don't have any proof, so it's just speculation. Allegedly, allegedly, allegedly. But once they get in, and yes, these game companies are hiring them in. So, I don't think we should only hold companies like Sweet Baby Inc. responsible for this nonsense. Hold the developer responsible. Hold EA responsible. Hold CD Projekt Red responsible. Hold every single one of the devs the companies, the publishers, responsible for bringing this in and maybe, just maybe, terrify the devs on what would happen if they do hire these companies. That you're going to close your wallet and take your money elsewhere. I think that's an even better idea. Maybe use the same verbiage as them, but I don't know. Uh, they don't force themselves into the game. Okay, it should be noted that while Sweet Baby name may not have any concrete leverage against video game companies, its co-founder and CEO Kim Belair has proudly boasted of weaponizing outrage culture. She specifically said, terrify them with the idea, them as in the marketing department, terrify the marketing department with the idea of what might happen if they do not agree to your demands, your ideas. Oh boy. Quote, if you're creating, if you're creative working, wait, what? If you are creative working in AAA, if you're a creative working in AAA, I have to decipher this fucking dialogue, which I did for many years, put this stuff up to your higher ups. Ah, yes, this is the quote. Uh, and if they don't see the value and what you're asking for when you ask for complaint consultants, uh, when you ask for research, go have a coffee with the marketing team and just terrify them, right there, that's her quote, uh, with the possibility of what's going to happen if they don't give you what you want. That is from a 20, let's see, 2021 panel GDC conference, which is going on right now. If you haven't seen the video, 50 developers screaming on the lawn. Can we just do that in, in private? We all have our nervous breakdowns and scream and yell and because so we're so frustrated. Do that in private. You're embarrassing yourselves. Hmm. Let's see, because they have to consider, blah, blah, blah. We've heard it already. Let's see. To this end, Galloway would later ask Mercante, just why Sweet Baby Inc., out of the many, many such diversity and inclusion-focused consulting consultation companies that offer their services to the industry, to which she would point, okay, why, what? I guess, why is it Sweet Baby Inc. being singled out right now? Because they fired the first shot trying to shut down a curator page, and the man's Steam account with lies and a false reporting campaign. And if there's anything, content creators, YouTubers, gamers, they take offense to that. They don't like the false flags, the false claims. They take offense and they tend to come together, even if they don't agree with each other on different subjects. They will come together because activity like that makes the entire industry worse. <sighs> I think it's a perfect storm of a lot of things. Well, yeah, someone at Sweet Baby Inc. noticed that this account was made on Steam and noticed how it was gaining traction. At the time, I believe it only had a couple of thousand followers. And noticed that it was intended to prevent people from buying and playing these games, even though unless you go to someone's house and hold a figurative gun to their head in Minecraft... There's no way you can stop someone from buying a game unless it's absolute shit and then no one's going to buy Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League and then stop playing it after a week and never go back to it again, even though it's an ongoing online multiplayer co-op game with seasonal content. But anyway, when does his first season, when does their first season hit with the Joker or not the Joker? Hmm. Do, do, do. And playing these games and requested that it be taken down. No, 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 no. They did not request. They called... For Oh, Chris Kindred, the lovely individual right there. Report the fuck out of this group. Is that the only thing? No, Chris Kindred went on a campaign of harassment themselves and got kicked off of Twitter for it. Kicked off even more organization from them, the people who made the Steam group. 
Cabrutus is the least organized individual you can imagine. All he did was make a group and start researching. And then the internet came and handed him his cape, because he is a superhero right now, and helped him. And that's what channels like mine are doing. Putting these names out there, putting these people out there, putting their own words out there. Finding out what they say, that way, showing what they say in their own videos, in their own live streams, that way, no one can be taken out of context. We're not putting words in anyone's mouths. We're not the ones blatantly refusing to hire a particular demographic in order to feel safe. We're not the ones calling to terrify the marketing department in fear of what might happen if you don't do as you're told. While Mercantile, at least, Mercante, I said Mercantile, holy crap, at least gets credit for mentioning Kindred's call to harassment. That's, yeah, that is a first, as opposed to the Verge's Ash Parish, who mm, left out any mention of the involvement of her coverage for fear it might muddy her narrative. It's called a lie. You, you know, lie by omission. Her claims as to the intentions of Sweet Baby Inc. detected, Steam Curator Group could not be further from the truth. Again, basically because you can't stop someone from buying anything. If somebody has the money, they're going to go spend it. Simply put, the Steam Curator function allows users to cultivate a running record of games according to any metric they like. For example, superhero games, anime games, or games involving particular consulting companies. Uh, Sweet Baby Detected is meant to simply notify Steam users who voluntarily opt in to it as to which games the company had a hand in. Hmm. Interesting. Like, actual, factual information. And yet we have here, more and more times, the idea that you can prevent someone from buying a game and playing a game simply because the game's on a list. Personally, I think we need more lists like this, and not just the consulting companies. Because the consulting companies don't have jobs, they do not have work, without the developers themselves. More and more games are coming out with Kim Belair's involvement and other employees of Sweet Baby Inc., regardless of how much, how many of these developer pages and Sweet Baby Inc.'s own website are trying to scrub this information from the internet. I don't know how well or how much they're affecting the Wayback Machine, but people, the internet has ways of finding out information, taking screenshots, because what some of these so-called journalists and consultants and CEOs and whatever developers don't seem to understand that the internet is forever. Someone will find it. Once you post it on the internet, it's there forever. Someone will screenshot it. Someone will find it. Someone will go and get dig backlogs and show all the lovely little things that you say. And I'm all in favor of it. Find out what these consulting companies are all about. Find out what games are involved. Because eventually, if enough gamers shut their wallets down, these developers, developers will understand and finally get the idea, get the picture that all we want, first and foremost, is a good story, good game, escapism, power fantasy, all those nifty things. Ultimately, we don't care about diversity, equity, inclusion, none of that nonsense. Put whatever you want in the game as long as it's good. As long as the game is good, as long as your diversity, equity, and inclusion makes sense in the world and in the story, you'd be very surprised at what the things that gamers will ignore as long as they are having fun. But hey, what do I know? Some of these developers have seemed to have forgotten the basic premise of a video game is to have fun. But you know what? Let me know what you think in the comments. Leave a like, leave a dislike, do all those nifty things that we YouTubers beg you to do. And I hope to see you on the next one. Bye-bye.